Hi, my name is Leo Hand. I've been a football coach for 42 years. I started coaching in upstate New York. I've also coached in California. I've coached in New Mexico. And I've, the past 10 years, I've been a coach in the state of Texas. I've coached as a defensive coordinator at four and five A schools. And today, I'm here to talk to you about the double eagle, double flex defense, which is kind of an unusual type of defense and I think there's some information here that may be of value to all coaches. In this segment, we're going to talk about, number one, how to scout more efficiently and analyze the information from scouting more efficiently, how to coordinate the stunt game with the various coverages, and lastly, how to prepare a good, efficient game plan against ace-back formation because this has become very, very popular. So we'll talk about not only ace-back formations but empty formations. We'll talk about jets or flies, whatever you call it, and all these different things that are, uh, are, are very run popular. One of the things that a lot of the coaches that have worked with me in the past have wanted information on was exactly what did we do to break down our films and analyze the information that we got from these films of our opponents so efficiently. Because we usually start around 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday after a Friday night game. And by 2 o'clock, we've pretty much printed out the scouting report for the players. Now, one of the things that I have found about myself that I didn't know until I actually became a defensive coordinator was that I'm a visual learner. When I get one of these commercial uh, programs, scouting programs, everything is in words, not pictures. And I've talked to a number of different uh, guys trying to sell these programs and I said I need it in pictures. I need to see pictures because this is how I learn. You give me a bunch of words, uh, they're meaningless to me. So what I want is a lot of pictures in my scouting report. When we break down film, we have three or four different coaches okay, who have a specific responsibility. Nobody kind of just sits there and watches. One coach is, uh, and this would be myself, drawn out to play, so I have these pictures. In the old system where we had cards, I just have four, three or four plays on a page, and I actually draw the plays out, and then I cut them. Okay? And that's all the information is, is the play and the formation. Another coach is keeping track of a lot of the technical information that we need as far as down and distance, field position, and all these different things. And we're going to go over that in just a second. Another coach is going on personnel groupings, okay, as far as what the substitution is when they go from a two-back formation to an ace-back formation or to an empty formation, if there is substitution. In other words, are they going four wides with one tight end and the fullback out here and the tailback in the backfield, or are they actually substituting two wide outs in and taking out the fullback and the tight end? Whatever, the, whatever the, their offensive scheme may be, he's keeping track of this so that we know this. Another coach is keeping track of their, uh, their personnel as far as who the starting players are on, on uh, offense what their height is, what their weight, what their year is, and any comments positive that we can present at our players. We never want to present anything negative because uh, scouting reports get around, not only that fact, but also the players get kind of overconfident if you say, well, this guard's not uh, a very good player, and things like that. Okay, when we put together a scouting report, this is what we're looking for. On the front page, We've got their personnel, we've got their lineup. We may even have some articles that have been written in the paper or some statistics from Max Prep about each player. In other words, uh, the quarterback, what his pass percentage is, how many yards he's completed for, et cetera, et cetera. And we do that with the, each of the starting players and the, the key substitutes. Now, on the second page, we've got tendencies, okay? And this has been done by one coach who has a sheet, and I don't have the sheet here, but he's just making little checks. For example, every time they run the ball, he's gonna put a little check, but he's gonna 
actually put down these things here and I've just put run but he's going to do the same thing with the pass. So eventually he's going to take run to the wide side. Every time they run to the wide side he's going to put a little check. Over here we got run to the short side. Okay, he's going to put a little check there. If the ball's in the middle of the field obviously we can't, we won't have a statistic on that. Okay, run to the short side, run right then run left. He'll just put a little check in here just like this. Okay. Every time they run to the right, they'll put one there. When they run to the left, they'll put another one. And when we get uh, uh, five of them, he'll cross it off like that. And he can actually very quickly uh, get the analysis on that uh, when we're finished with the, 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 in our district, we do three game films. Uh, every district is different, but we get three game films. And I think that's sufficient information for me as, as far as analyzing and getting into our opponent's brain and getting an idea of what they really want to do. We also get a statistic on run to the tight end if they do have a tight end and run to the split end. Now if they don't have that we don't, we don't, uh, we don't keep track of that. We may on an ace back formation if they have an offset tailback we may get uh, and they don't have a tight end we may get runs towards the ace back runs away from the ace back. Uh, and then we get runs towards the bench. Now we do the same thing with passing passing to the wide side, passing to the short side, passing right and left, okay, uh, and, and passes towards the bench. Now, we also get a down in distance, and I didn't put them all down here, but every time they run uh, on first and ten, it'll be a run, pass, and screen, okay? So every time they run here on first and ten, you'll put the little check in there, and that's really uh, something very vital as far as getting into the offensive coordinator's mind. How often they run, how often they pass on first down, okay? Because now you're going to really get an, in, an indication of what kind of team they really are. Third and 15, probably everybody's going to throw the ball. Now, if they're doing a lot of draws and a lot of screens, that's a good indication maybe they can't throw the ball down the field that well. But we're going to get a down and distance tendency, and that'll be on another page. So we're going to share that with our players. We also get a field tendency. We get uh, from the, when they're coming out of their goal line, we call this the minus 20 zone, then we go from the 20 to the 50, which is the cautious, the open, and this is pretty common. What percentage they do, run, pass, screen, and draw in these particular areas. And everything we're doing here, we're talking run, pass, screen, and, screen and draw. Now, another page is just formation tendencies. This is my responsibility. One coach is able to do all this because on the sheet he has this picture, okay, it's an open page, he has that picture, he has the down and distance, and he has all these things. So he's able to make these little checks here and get all this information down. I take my cards, okay, which, which I actually I have three or four pages, three or four plays on a page. I should take a scissors and cut them. And then I start sorting them. I start sorting them run pass first. Then I get a specific type of run, a specific type of pass. Uh, and then I get all the formations. Now, we start about eight o'clock in the morning and by two o'clock our scouting report is printed. We don't have to go through the process of trying to program this into a computer and waiting for the computer to analyze it. Because you take, for example, a pass play, how long it gets in there. Uh, you take one formation and all the different names that you have to give for all the different routes. You have to learn or you have to program your language into the computer. And then it's constantly in a change because uh, at the schools that I've been in, you usually get a different coordinator in and he either has to learn that language from the previous coordinator or he has to program his language in there and by the time you get it out you got all this all these scrambled words and to me they're meaningless so by two o'clock we're pretty much done with our analysis of information we spend the rest of the time probably about three hours printing up our scouting cards so that we're drawing uh, I would draw the running plays against our defensive schemes that we're going to use. The, the secondary coach is going to draw the pass play so that we have this for scouting teams. Okay, we're also going to do any information uh, that we want to put on the board for our players. And we actually print these, these scouting reports out for our players and we give them to them. 
this way, when I see I've got the cards in front of me or the cut-ups from the, the plays that I've drawn, I can sort them any way I want. I can look at them, and I've got the pictures in the scouting report, and the players have the pictures. So we have a specific running play, and we say how many times they ran it to the right, how many times they ran it to the left, how many times they actually ran it. So we know what their favorite run play is. We know what their favorite pass play is. We know what their favorite formation is. And just before the game, we test our players on this. Now, this gives me a lot of time because we're usually done by 5 o'clock on Saturday and we don't come in on Sunday. You know, any, any input I say to the, the, the my associate coaches, the secondary coach, the defensive line coach, say, you know, do you have any inputs? Do you have any insights here as far as what you'd like to see the game, uh, our game plan? And, and usually, you know, I get some really good uh, feedback. I've also given them the opportunity, like on Sunday evening, if they want to come in and they want to go over it, they have that option. Most of them, most of the staffs I've worked on, they say, no, that'd be, that'd be fine. It gives them the opportunity to go to church, to be with their families, to do the things that they need to do. It gives me time on Saturday morning to go out into the desert and run seven or eight miles and to think about these things and, you know, prepare in my mind what I have to do. Then I come in in the afternoon and I sit down and I kind of put on paper the things that we need to do and I actually draw it so that on game night I not only have a list of what we're going to do, for example, Moto 1, uh, TNAM 1, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I not only have this list, but I've got pictures there. So I've got pictures in front of me on game night that I can pick and then I got the number of what they're going to have on their wristband. And it's been a very effective thing. And a lot of coaches that have left our staff have come back and say, hey, can you give me those sheets? I'd like to go over that because we're sitting there, and I know in Texas a lot of the coaches are there till midnight on Saturday, midnight on Sunday, and then they have all these staff meetings on Monday and Tuesday during the week trying to get all these things. We don't have those things because we're very efficient in our analysis of our information in the process that we do to prepare our game plan has, uh, I think, been simplified. Because I know on some of the staffs I've been on, you're there on Sunday and half of the guys are watching, you know, the NFL games and other guys are just kind of sitting around eating donuts and drinking coffee and one or two guys are doing most of the work. And, and uh, that's not productive. I think, you know, if, if we're going to be real good football coaches, we've also got to think of our family, our children and our wives and, uh, you know, our spiritual beliefs on Sunday. And... Uh, we, 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 really, we really try to be uh, cognizant of these things and uh, not only just talk about it, but actually do it. Okay, next we're going to talk about how we coordinate our stunt game with our various coverages. We're going to talk about four different types of coverages uh, that we're going to coordinate with. Anytime we blitz whip, and we've already talked about the names of the different stunts that we do when we blitz whips. If we go all the way across, we're going to call it WEX. If we go into the A gap, we're going to call it WAM. If we go into the B gap, we're going to call it WEB. If we go into the C gap, we're going to call it uh, WEC, uh, WAC. And if we go out into the D gap, we're going to call it WIDE. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is the ER things. Anytime we blitz them, we call, we're, we're going to play cover five, and our two adjusters are going to be our stud and our rover. Those are the guys that are going to adjust against an ace-back formation. Now, so we're in some form of a zero coverage every time we blitz him. Now, we are able to play cover one and still blitz stud. I'm sorry, and still blitz whip, okay? But we have to put an ER in front of it because anytime we put an ER, it tells Ted, to cover the near back or the ace back. So let's say, for example, we were going to blitz him into the A gap, we'd call it Wexer, okay, Whammer, okay. In here, we hardly ever do it, okay, unless we're taking Ted all the way to the outside, and when we do that, we call it Wolf. When we do it here, it would be Wacker, and here it would be Wider. Now, when we go cover six, we're blitzing our uh, rover backer. So if we're going all the way across with rover, okay, we would call it uh, rex. If we were going into the A gap, it would be ram. If we're going into the B gap, it would be rack. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, reb. 
if we're going into the D gap, it would be rack, and if we're going into the D gap, it would be ride. Now, if we know for sure it's a two back formation, we can give these ER things, but normally we don't like to do that, especially if they fluctuate between a two back and an ace back formation, because once we do that, we have to remove them out of here and we have to have a check off. We don't like to have a lot of check offs. We like to keep it as simple as we possibly can. So we don't blitz him very much unless we're going to play a coverage and we're going to keep him in the box and we'll talk about a couple things we do against ace back when we go into our next segment here. Now, if we, we go stud, we call it zero. We call this zero coverage. So the two, anytime we send him from the edge, remember we call it so, and if we send him inside, we call it C. Now, we, we said that uh, the two adjusters on zero coverage would be rover and the free safety. So he would cover the tight end, and if it was an F4 wide type, we'd have rover and the free safety covering. Anytime we blitz the free safety, remember if we blitz into the strong side, it's a plus. It's a fire plus, and if we blitz into the weak side, it's a fire minus, okay? Then the two adjusters would be rover and the, and, and the stud. And we'll go over that in our PowerPoint presentation, and you'll also see some of this on the game film. Okay, uh, there's two things that we can do here, okay, when we're playing cover one, and to be sound with no checkoffs, okay? We can do all our twists with our five in the trenches, and we can also blitz uh, whip with an ER call. So when we analyze it, and I'm not going to read all these. If you want to freeze these on your uh, screen, you can do that. It lists all the different possibilities. But you can see, I'll just read a couple of them here. Our various twists, we got Moto, Moti, Mote, Monat, Motex, all the way down to the bottom. Now, when we get over here on our twists and blitz, all of them are going to have a uh, ER thing whenever we're going to uh, blitz our uh, whip linebacker because now Ted is going to have to cover either the ace back or the strong side half back. So we got Mo Wexer, Mo Wolf, Mo Wacker, and all the way down the list. Okay, these are a couple examples, okay, of just twists here. Cover one against a two back formation. This is T Nam one, okay. And over here we've got Nam. Over on this side we got T. It's a cover one with our whip and our rover cover and the, str the strong and weak halfbacks respectively. Okay, now we've got a situation where we not only have a twist here, but we also have the blitz. And this is me wolf. And anytime we've got a wolf going on, and we can do this against ace back formation, Ted is going to go all the way around the horn here. On an ace back, he won't go quite as far because now, but he has to with the tight end, he has to rip through the, the outside shoulder of the tight end. Pro, tight end's probably gonna release anyways, but he does. He is responsible for the strong side halfback or the ace back if it was a four wide situation. Over here, we've got a T. Okay, now, in this, this design here, we uh, are gonna have some check offs because now we're getting some possibilities when we're, we're blitzing rover. Sometimes you play a team that doesn't use any ace back formations or they have a tendency just to use a two back formation or a three back formation in a run situation and you may want a blitz rover but normally if they're fluctuating between ace back and two back formations you wouldn't want to do these things at least I wouldn't want to do them because it involves too many check offs. But see all these different twists we have here these would never need a check off. None of the twists would need a check off. None of the uh, things where we're, we're blitzing uh, whip wood. Now anything here where we've got uh, the uh, a blitz with the rover, whether it be a rammer or just a, you know a, a, a ram or a rack or whatever, we need to blitz off. Now again, if you want to look at these possibilities, I would not use these very often unless I knew for sure that I was facing a team that was predominantly a two-back formation team. These are some examples, okay, of things that would need checkoffs against uh, ace back formations. May would need a checkoff because we're blitzing Mike into the weak side A gap, and if 
rover had to adjust, we would leave the B gap unguarded. So we wouldn't want to do this thing if there was a possibility of an A back forma ace back formation. Okay, and we have a twist over here, which is T. So this would be May T1, which would need a checkoff. Okay, this is Mex Wolf 1, okay? And again, we would need a checkoff because we're leaving the weak side B gap unguarded if Rover has to walk out and cover a wideout. So we've got Wolf here, okay? Uh, and this, I didn't draw the little thing, but the Ted now would be responsible for the strong side halfback, okay, or the ace back. Okay, now we've got uh, Nat Rat 1, okay? Now we've got Nat over to the strong side, but we've got Rat over to the weak side, which is a Mel over here, blitzing the Rover here, and we've got the uh, Mike cover and the uh, weak side halfback. Again, this would need a check off against an ace back formation of some sort. Okay, now we've got a situation where we're blitzing both of them. Obviously, we need a big check off here, but we've got both Mike and Ted covering the two halfbacks, and we've got a Rexer uh, Wexer, okay, where we've got the cross in here. It was a great pass rush against the two back formation because we really got an overload here. Incidentally, when these guys are going to cover these guys, they're going to come up and they're going to stem up to the line of scrimmage and they're going to give the impression to, to this guard that they're, going to, they're coming. And basically, they're going to pressure this guard, pressure this guard, both of these players. They're going to pressure these guards anytime they're responsible for covering the near halfback until the, the halfback goes off. And basically, what we found in the past is the main thing they got to worry about is the screen, okay? The guy blocking and then peeling off because he's going to stay in and block in most instances, okay, uh, when they see all these backs coming in because usually these two backs are responsible for picking up the blitz on these uh, two backers, the rover and the wolf, or the rover and the whip, I'm sorry. Okay, this is cover five. Never needs a check off, okay, because the free safety now is going to cover the strong side half back or the ace back. Now, this enables us to always uh, blitz the whip linebacker with no checkoffs. Some examples, okay. These would give us some twists that would never need a check off, okay? Okay, mo wag, me wag, all the way down the line. You can freeze your screen and look at all these. No sense me reading all these, but all these, all these things are possible without a check off with cover five. Some examples here, okay. Me web five, okay? We've got me over here, okay? We've got Webb, which tells Ted to go through the strong side uh, A gap and tells the free safety. Now, if they were to go a four wide, a free safety would just adjust, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, he would not adjust. Rover would adjust and the stud would adjust and the free safety would cover the ace back. Okay, uh, this is cover six. This always enables us to blitz Rover, but again, we're going to have to play uh, some form of zero coverage because the free safety is going to be an adjuster and the stud are going to be adjusters. In this case, because we're blitzing Rover, okay, Whip is going to cover the strong side halfback unless we give it an ER call and then Ted would cover the strong side halfback or the ace back. Whip will stay in the box against a, an ace back formation and uh, uh, the free safety would be the adjuster. These are some examples, okay? These would be just simple uh, uh, twists, okay? That would, to be the strong side, for example, toe rex, T rex, tail rex, toe ram, etc., all the way down the list. And these would be some where we're actually blitzing both of them. We're blitzing, okay, rex, and we're giving it a wexer call or, or a rexer call or a wolf call or something where we're blitzing both linebackers against an ace back thing. Uh, this is an example of toe max reb, okay? We've got max here, which gives us three-man rush to this side and also a three-man pass rush to this side. We're rushing six against a two-back formation, ace-back formation, free safety would adjust. 
This is Wolf Me Ram. Okay, we're blitzing uh, the, the whip linebacker and Ted is covering the halfback or the ace back if it's an ace back formation. And we're coming in here with a, uh, a ram call here and a me call with a twist over here. See, it gives us a lot of div uh, diversity here as far as being able to put pressure on this quarterback. Now, one thing that I do want to say about these, these uh, things where we're keeping uh, the whip and the rover in the box versus ace back formations, you can kind of tell, okay, what kind of team they are. Are they a team where they've got a great running quarterback? You may want to play a lot, quite a bit of this if he's not a great passer. And we see this sometimes. They put two running backs into the backfield and for the, basically for the purpose to be able to make us tackle in space out here. And they try to spread the field out with four wides. But basically, they don't have a great passing game. They may throw in a lot of bubbles. They may run a lot of jail breaks and some short passing game. But they're not really a great passing team. So we may want to run a lot of that stuff where we're keeping the rover and the whip in the box. On the other hand, okay, they may have a great passing quarterback, but they're very one-dimensional in their running game because the ace back is really the only guy that really is effective carrying the ball. The quarterback's not really uh, an effective runner. That's one of the reasons why we don't see that a whole lot in the NFL. You don't want to take a guy that's making $14, 15000000 million and have him running the ball very much because he's taking enough hits there on his sacks. Going on to zero coverage when we're going to blitz the stud. Okay, now we have is our adjusters, we have the rover, and we have the free safety again. So if we come from the outside, we call it so. If we go inside, we call it C. These are some of the possibilities, okay, as far as just the twists with so or C. Okay, and you're going to freeze your screen, okay, moto, so, or C, okay. And again, moto is our base, so it goes with almost anything. Moti, so, okay, mote, so, okay, monet, so, or C, and all the way down the list. Now, these are some things where we can add waxer, wider, whacker, whatever we need to add into it if we want to also blitz not only our... Uh, our, our stud, but also our whip, to give the impression that we are, in fact, giving you a four-man strong side pass rush. These are some examples. Monat C, okay. We've got a little nat call here. We've got our N coming to the outside. We've got our stud coming inside. And again, if we get a four wide, he's the adjuster, and he's the adjuster over here. Okay, whip is staying in here, playing the, uh, the ace back if it's a four wide situation. Okay, bow, wham, or so. Okay, and this is would be the armband. Okay, it would read Mo wham, or so zero. And we'd have all the zero ones listed that we might want. We may only have one or two of these. We think they're going to be effective versus their pass protection. And again, now we're, we're, we're coming from the outside with so, we're coming inside with uh, whammer, where Ted is going to lock on the ace back or the strong side half back. Whip is blitzing through the A-gap, okay, and obviously anytime he does that, nose has to go into the weak side A-gap, and we got Mo over to this side. So we're real strong here. If he adjusts, we're still strong over here. We haven't left any gaps unguarded, and we've got a, a good pass rush. we got three guys coming to the strong side, but it looks like four to the blockers here because he's going to stay in here, and we're probably going to get somebody shooting free. It's kind of a zone blitz concept for us. That's why I haven't been running zone blitz for a long time. Now, anytime we want to block uh, blitz to free safety, we've already gone over this. Plus is to the strong side, minus is to the weak side. And this is a fire coverage for us. Now, we don't do a whole lot of this. We don't mess around a whole lot with this. We either go toe or T or me or mo, and that's all we can kind of combine it with. So a couple examples here, moto plus fire would be the call that we make, and we've got a mo moto here, okay, with our flex guys, and we've got uh, our, our whip and our rover with their normal calls. We're getting this pressure in here, and we've also got the pressure of uh, 
of uh, if we if we were to have an ace back formation, he would adjust. He would adjust. We do this quite a bit against an ace back formation, and a lot of times when we're going to blitz. Uh, when we're playing cover five against an ace-back formation, we'll blitz this guy, but we'll start bringing him up because he's going to cover the ace-back. And it looks like he's going to come off and, you know, blitz, but he doesn't, and he ends up covering the ace-back. And we get a lot of missed blocking assignments that way. Okay, before we begin the PowerPoint on how we coordinate the stunt game with the, uh, with the uh, various coverages, I'd like to just go over a couple things on the board that I think that are important. Some of it is review. Number one is that when we get a four wide team, an ace back team, in this case we've got a pistol formation, the ball's on the hash, which it should be about 80% of the time, or very near the hash in, in, in a high school, college, or NFL game. Of course, NFL, the, the hashes are so much closer. But anytime the ball is on the hash here, and they've got a pistol formation, we're going to make sure we've got this stagger. We're always going to have a stagger between the whip and the free safety because our cover one adjustment is the stud and the rover are going to be the two adjusters. So we've got the stud out here and we make sure we have a different level here. If, for example, they were switched and this guy were to be on the line, the stud would be the deeper player and this guy would be the, uh, the, the free safety would be the, the shorter player, because we don't want to be able to let him get picks on us and rubs. It's not so important when we've got good splits between the two, but any time they get close, and a lot of the ace-back teams are doing that now because they want to get these, these, these what they call legal rubs picks, uh, we want to make sure we're at levels. This is going to help us a lot. Now, the stagger here because they're in a pistol formation, they haven't really declared where the ace back is going to go. We want to make sure that our whip is into the boundary and our free safety is to the wide side so that he can get help. If it's an obvious passing situation, he's going to be deeper and he's going to make sure he splits the distance between the stud and the rover so that these two guys, if they can funnel him into the free safety, he can really give them a great deal of help. Okay, But now we're talking just a normal running situation, first and 10, and they're a 50-50 type team. We don't know they're going to run it, they're going to pass. So we're going to make sure that our free safety is to the wide side of the field and our whip is into the boundary. Because if they were to run speed option, he's got to make sure he's got pitch. If they were to run the counter trade to this side, he's got to make sure that he's got the bounce off. The same with the free safety. So that when we're playing an ace-back team, we make sure that the free safety gets the same kind of reads, repetitions, as the whip linebacker will get. Because he's got to be able to see these guards for the counter trade too. He's got to be able to see now, out of this formation here, when these two guys pull, that he's got the bounce off here on the tailback. Okay, but again, if it is, if it is a, an obvious passing situation. He's going to deepen himself and position himself into whatever players he's able to help. Now, let's go to a offset situation. Anytime that the ace back is set to this side, okay, we've got a situation, the same exact situation here. Now the whip is over here. He knows that he's got the bounce off on counter tray. He knows that he's got the bounce off if we have a quarterback counter trade to this side and he's also got the pitch on the speed option. Now, it changes significantly when the ace back comes to the wide side of the field because now the whip has got to position himself in a situation where he can play the pitch on the speed option. Now that pretty much puts the free safety in a situation here in the middle of the field. Because it is the boundary, and we've got two other defenders over here that can help him, we feel that this should be a good enough athlete, and we're always looking for somebody good enough, that on the bounce off here on the counter trade to the ace back, he can get up here and cover it. I've, I think in all the years that I've covered this, had to defend this ace back formation, I've only seen I think once or twice, and I think it was a missed call where they actually try to run a speed option over to this side, which would make it pretty easy over here. Most time when they're going to run a speed option, it's over here. So as far as the leads and the traps and all the neat things that ace-back teams like to do in here, we feel that we can, with the five in the trenches, they can handle that. But these are the two things, the speed option and the counter trade bounce off, 
that the whip and the free safety must be able to defend. This is something else that we like to do a lot against uh, ace back formations and we'll see it a little bit on the PowerPoint but I want to kind of go over it a little bit before we do that. Uh, we've got something what we call gold and silver. It's just a call within itself. Now we can do whatever we want up here. We can do nat or nam or t or mo or toe, or whatever we want to do with our front guys. A lot of times we just, if we want to keep it real simple, we just say base with those guys. But whenever we're going to play gold, and this is a real neat thing against an ace back formation, we will stem this guy up here. And most ace back teams, they like this because they know that the extra rusher is coming here. What it does is two things, okay? Number one, it takes away the pitch on the speed option because his aiming point is right here for the outside shoulder of that ace back. And we only do gold and silver when we get an offset. We don't do it against, uh, against uh, the pistol formation. We only do it when we get an offset ace back, the normal thing you'd normally see. So that We've actually had a couple of instances where we actually intercepted a pitch, especially when we first started doing this. Teams have gotten a little smarter on this. But when he's coming down here, down the line, the quarterback's coming down the line and he pitches the ball over here, the whip is usually right there in his face, and sometimes he's actually been able to intercept the ball. Okay, now, it also gives us another advantage in that now, okay, when they run power trade to the ace back over here, when they're running the power tray here, and he crosses the, the face here, it allows this end, the strong side end, to run the heel line. Count it, the team, ace back teams hate that. They're always trying to prevent this guy from coming down the heel line. Because a lot of times he'll stop the play right up in here. And they don't like that. They want to hold him, okay, with the read. When they run the counter tray, they want to get the read on this. Okay, same with the zone, they want to get the read. So anytime we're running gold and he's coming off the edge, okay, and the ace back crosses his face, now the end, instead of running the heel line, excuse me, I'm sorry, he still will run the heel line, but instead of the whip linebacker coming off here, he's going to redirect his course right to the quarterback and hit him right now in the jaw. And that's what we want to do is hit that quarterback right now so that there's no decision. He's got to give the ball off and he's got to get hit. Okay? Now, that's gold. Another thing that we do that we think really helps us a lot, and we'll see it on the PowerPoint again, but I just want to kind of get it give you an explanation on this, is we'll run something we call silver. And ace back teams really don't like this because now we shift Rover down here and we send him off the edge. Obviously, enable to, to, to block him now because we've got everybody here covered. We got the, the, the two tackles are covered by the ends. We got the nose here and we've got five players in the box. So everybody in the interior line is covered. We got a free rush here. They're going to have to get this guy over here to cover it. Now, the first time we ever did this, uh, we had a, a, a real weird situation because if we were to shift him over here, they would shift over here. And then we'd shift this guy over here, and then he'd shift back. We did this about four or five times uh, against John Skelton, who's now playing for the Arizona Cardinals. And they must have shifted back and forth three or four times before they got to delay a game. And... Then the next, series, the next time that they tried it, we kept shifting back and forth, and we ended up with a, uh, uh, a, uh, a timeout. And eventually they had to run the play because they, they didn't like silver. They hadn't seen it. Teams now in our district are getting used to silver, and they're able to get this guy over here sometimes and get a good block on this. Some people have tried to remedy this with the, the pistol formation, and that's helped them quite a bit. But anytime we get this offset thing, we're going to use a lot of gold and silver. Now, obviously, we're in zero coverage across the board, but we're getting a pretty darn good pass rush. And one of the good things about this defense is, is we've got everybody covered here. And if we can get one mismatch, one mismatch with that extra rusher coming, okay, 
so that this guy is involved in the blocking with gold and silver, we think we got a pretty good situation, especially with all the twists and the stuff that we've got going on in here. Okay, lastly, we're going to go into our ACE-BAC planning here. Some things that we do that we think are pretty good against ACE-BAC formations. Okay, first of all, we've talked about this. We did it on the field, but just to kind of go over it again, anytime that the halfback is offset, remember, we're going to kind of have a stagger here. This is the wide side. We're going to put our free safety in the middle of the formation. And to the wide side, we're going to put our whip linebacker because he's going to cover the ACE-BAC. Now, if we've got a pistol formation, and we've gone over this again on the board, we're going to make sure that the whip is into the boundary and the free safety is to the wide side of the field. Now, these are things that uh, we've gone over a little bit on the field, but I just want to emphasize them again here. Anytime we get this kind of uh, tray we're reading, or even a zone read, the backside, the weak side end is responsible for taking the quarterback, and it's not something we want to be real tentative about. We want to get away after this guy, and we want to hit this guy. And this is real important, especially if he is a real good runner. You saw USC play Texas a few years ago for the national championship. USC had a real difficult time trying to tackle Vince Young, and uh, so we want to make sure that we get him tackled before he gets going. We don't want to sit here and play cat and mouse and go down the line with him. We really want to hit him right now. So our end is coming down, and we're going to make sure that we try to take out both blockers, okay, as far down the line of scrimmage as we possibly can. Our free safety now has the bounce off for the ace back. He becomes, the whip becomes the alley player, and we hope we can get a little penetration here because we're playing a very attacking technique with our mic and our Ted and our nose. We get it to this side again now. We've got, the, we've got the weak side end trying to take out the two blockers, okay. <clears throat> we've got the end here now because in this case we've got a quarterback counter tray, okay. And we see quite a bit of this. I don't know how much if you see in your particular area, but we see a lot of it in Texas where they run a counter, especially if this is a good runner here. So we've got fake into the ace back, so we want to make sure that this end checks it before he goes down the line. And once he, he's sure that the ace back doesn't have the ball, he's going to continue down the line, down the heel line. The whip linebacker's got the bounce off, okay, to the quarterback should it occur. And our free safety should be able to come down here. He's going to first check and make sure that the quarterback doesn't have the ball. So we've got two guys on this quarterback if he's a great runner. And then he's going to come down and play the alley. Okay. If we're to the wide side now and they run the speed option, uh, we get this kind of situation where uh, if they're not blocking the end, he's going to close, hit the quarterback, and we should be real sound. We, 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 teams haven't been real successful running this against us unless they lead the, uh, the uh, tackle on our end. And this happens, sometimes we try to bobtail this because we're starting to see quite a bit of this. So we bobtail this, it means that if I get blocked here, I'm going to go right to the pitch, okay, and he's going to read this. If this tackle blocks out, we read speed option. I'm going to hit the quarterback right now because the guard has got to take care of, if we're, if we're reach blocking here, okay, like this, he's got to take care of this player here, this guard here, so we get a free shot on the quarterback with our whip and we get this over here. We've started to experiment with this and we're getting pretty good at it and I think we're seeing more and more of this because teams have been able to take this play away pretty well in, in the last few years. Okay, uh, this is just a cover one, okay, where we're just doing our calls up front, okay, and we see here where we've got T Nam. Okay, this is the center here. We got a little nam, a little twist over here. We got a T over here. It's cover one, and we've already talked about this, but I just want to demonstrate some of the different things that we might be able to do against this ace back type stuff. Now, we get this, and it needs no check off. Okay, we get a little blitz here with the whip. Now we've got, okay, me wolf. Okay, we're going right through the B gap here. We're twisting to the outside, and we got this. And incidentally, if they did run the speed option here, Okay, we'd have to get a situation where, okay, he would have pitch and would have quarterback. Now, we wouldn't be able to bobtail this, so this might not be something we'd want to do in a situation where they might run a speed option. Okay, and if they were to run the counter trade, we'd have the 
the, the, the free safety on the bounce off over to the weak side. Okay, okay, double eagle, double flex, okay. Me web, and this is something that I talked about with cover five just a minute ago. We're stemming up the free safety. It looks like we're in a, in a free safety blitz, but he's gonna stop here and he's gonna cover the, the pistol back back here, the ace back who's lined in the pistol. pistol. And we're sending the whip over here. This gives us a nice three-man pass rush. And if we do get a, a little block over here, we get this ace back trying to stop this here, we might get a free rush here. So this is something that uh, we think is pretty decent here. Okay, me, wolf, five, cover five, and you see that the stud and the rover are the adjusters in cover five. Okay, cover six now, we're keeping uh, the, the, uh, the rover in the box here. Now, I've drawn it with a tight end, but you don't necessarily need it with a tight end here. Okay, he could be out here, the stud would cover him. I just put it in here because sometimes, some areas, they're still running some tight end with their ace back formations. I think we're starting to see quite a bit of that now recently. Now, we know over here that we've got a situation where we've probably got maybe an ace back counter tray over here, tailback counter tray over here, but we've got the speed option coming over here. And Whip is in a good situation where he can do that. So we might tighten up a little bit if he's tight here and really give a good jam so that he can't prevent us from getting over here. Now, they did run a speed option. He'd probably come here anyways, which would give our, our, our stud uh, on the quarterback and the whip on the, the, the pitch. So this is something that would not need to check off at all because we've got our proper adjusters here, which would be the and cover six would be the stud and free safety. So this would be toe ram six. That would be the call. That would be what was on our armband, and there'd be no check off. Okay, the double eagle, double flex, cover six, okay. Wexer, Rexer. Now again, we're, we're blitzing both linebackers, okay? <clears throat> and we got the free safety, and our stud is our adjuster, okay? And we got Ted spying right here. But again, you know, they've got a real a serious problem here as far as protection, because he's gonna pressure this guard, okay? Unless he peels off immediately, then he's gotta peel off. And you gotta make sure you got a guy that's good enough to do that. You may have to switch these two guys sometimes uh, if he's a better, drop guy. If not, you may have to put another linebacker in here when you do this. But it's something that most teams are going to keep him in to block because we've got too many people in the box now. We've got seven people in the block, box and they've only got six uh, blockers here. So we're going to get some mismatch, not only mismatches, but we're going to get some missed assignments in here, we think. And as history proves, this, is, this has occurred. Okay. Now, let me see. Okay, this is an example of gold. Okay, this is gold, okay, and we're keeping both guys in the box now, and we're going to stand up, we're going to stand back, we, and you'll see it in the game clip where we do some of this, okay, where he'll come up here, and he'll come up here, and they'll both be on the line, and then all of a sudden he'll drop back, or vice versa, however we're going to do it. But we've got the gold situation, we've gone over this on the board, as soon as the tailback crosses the quarterback's face, Whip is going to hit him right square in the face, okay, and we got the bounce off with the rover over here. We've got everything stopped here with the end here. He's going to try to take off the blockers. Hopefully we're going to get some penetration with our nose and our tit and our mic. And this is gold against the, the, the option, okay, the speed option, which we've gone over here. And uh, I don't think it needs any more explanation than what we've given it. Okay, uh, Moto Gold 6, okay, uh, where now, okay, We've got a situation where, okay, we've got an obvious pass here. Whip is responsible for covering him to peel off and cover it. And now you've got to decide what you can do with your rover. You can either give him a, a designated blitz that he can do, or you can drop him into the hole if you're getting a lot of crossing patterns, which some people see. We, don't see, we haven't seen a whole lot of that recently. That was real popular a few years back, but recently we haven't seen as much crossing as we used to. We see more picks to the outside. Okay, this is silver where we're getting uh, the pressure coming off the back edge here. We've got both rover and whip in the box here and we're coming off the back edge. And again, that forces this guy to come over here to get a block. Otherwise, we've got enough pass rushers, we're gonna get a sack. With silver, we could get some blitzes in here with whip and have Ted cover. Now, I didn't draw that up, but that'd be something we could get. For example, we could get Whammer in here and send him in here and look at the pass rush that we've got, okay? We've got a great pass rush here. We've got four coming from this side, and we've got 
two coming to this side with the illusion of three coming. So there's something I didn't draw up I probably should have drawn up. Okay, this is the free safety blitz, okay. Monet minus fire, okay. I kind of added that in. I said we just use Mo and T and stuff. Sometimes we do this, but this would be a special thing. As a general rule, we're just going to use Mo and Toe when we blitz a free safety and, or me and T with it and combine it somehow like Toe me or uh, me Toe or whatever. But uh, now we've done with Nat. And sometimes we've done it a special call where we've actually done Mex or we've done Tex or whatever and we blitzed the free safety through. But these were special game plan things that we did because we saw some sort of flaw in their pass protection. Okay, this is me wider where we're actually blitzing, okay, the whip, okay, and we're spying Ted here. But you see what we got, it looks like a four-man pass rush, okay, and they've only got really two, two blockers. Now, if they give you this kind of thing where, you know, they're backside blocking or they're, you know, they're man scheming, this is really going to mess it up for them. So we should get a lot of pressure here when we do that. Sometimes we see people, they, they, they see so much pressure coming that they decide that they're going to throw a lot of quick passes. When we do that, we're going to still continue with some pressure, but we're going to sit back here maybe a little bit deeper than we normally would and sit on these quick routes and then come up and try to really put a good hit on the receiver. Sometimes we have gone into a cover two zone to do this and to deal with this. Okay. This is a definite cover five here, okay, where we've got a me web five, where the free safety now is going to come up. Look like he's going to blitz, but he's not going to blitz. He's going to cover the halfback. We're coming here, and again, it looks like we've got a four-man pass rush or a four-man pass rush coming strong, but really, in, in fact, it's only a three-man pass rush, and we may screw up his assignment a little bit, and we've got a good chance of a sack here. Okay. Uh, any, now, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of debate on this, and uh, how do you defend the empty set? And I think, to my way of thinking, what I want to do is I want to send six guys, because somebody's going to come free. And some of the game clip, you're going to see some check red. We played a, a team in the Sun Bowl, our first game one season. And we've got a we got a whole bunch of sacks on this thing. This poor quarterback, he was a sophomore, and I really felt sorry for this kid because he was getting sacked all the time. And we didn't play anything soft back here. I see people trying to play soft, and I think that's what they want because they've got all sort of mismatches back here that they can set up and all kinds of pick situations and all kinds of neat things that they want to do. But what I want to do is cause this guy to throw the ball real fast. So we've been pretty successful with this check red, and we don't see as much empty as we did at one time. What we're seeing here is a wildcat situation, and we're going to go over that in just a second. Okay, when we see this wildcat with the jet formation, we see a lot of that where we get this cross, okay, and then we get the, the, the wildcat guy coming through here. Now, obviously, okay, the wildcat may be successful, may not on normal running plays, whether it be traps or doesn't have leads, he may be some sort of a zone or whatever, because we've got five guys on five and we got a little backup here with the free safety. So that when we see this and we see this wildcat situation, we're going to keep the free safety. We're not going to check red. We're going to put him back here so that when we get the jet motion across, we put the whip back in here. Now he's responsible for the wildcat, for the running back back here. And what we're going to do is take this free safety and come over here, and he'll take responsibility for this man here. And we're going to actually blitz him right off the edge and hit this motion guy right square in the face, right off the bat. We've been real successful at that because we've got one team in our district that does a lot of that and we've been able to shut them down pretty well, with the exception if we get a real great tailback here, and sometimes, you know, because they're a little bit better and a lot more physical than we are up front, and sometimes this is where we break down. But this thing we've been able to shut down really well, even when they put a real good running back here with this jet motion and this wildcat, because we do see quite a bit of that now, and I'm seeing quite a bit of that throughout the country and with the D1 teams. 
Okay, this first play, we got a bunch down here. Okay, we got 11 personnel. And what they're going to run is an option play, and we got Moti going on. Looking, uh, there's 10 personnel out of the gun, and we're looking for the defensive A and play against the tray. Quarterback keeps the ball, defensive ends, looks for quarterback, and makes good tackle. Next one is 10 personnel. We got Moto, zero. So we got both of our linebackers lying here in the box. Okay, we got gold going on here. Ten personnel. We got gold against the pass. <clears throat> so gold's coming off the edge right here at this running back. Okay, now we got 10 personnel. Again, we got Moto Gold, okay? So we're coming off the edge right here. Okay, we got Gold again against 10 personnel. He's coming off here and they're gonna flip the ball to this guy on a quick pitch type play. Ten personnel, and we got Wham versus the Run. It's got Whip, Blitz, and the A Gap. Explain in the backfield. Okay, this one is ten personnel, and we got Wham again versus the pass. Got both linebackers aligned in the box, playing zero coverage. A hurried throw, they run the bubble, they'll get very much on that. And this is uh, 10 personnel wham versus the pass. What results is a hurried throw. Okay, got a bunch situation over here. And uh, Have a good rush from the defensive end, we end up with a sack. This is Moto Silver versus the run. It's the backer coming off the edge here. Moti Wham versus the bubble down at the red zone here. Comes up and makes a good play, gives us the better field position. Got a bunch formation here, and we're going to motion and we're going to have a good check to red. Motion out of a two back, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, out of an ace back into an empty backfield. Going to check, we're checking the red, we're getting the pass rush, we're getting a hurry throw here. Okay, we're going to motion here and we're going to run an option play. We start out with empty, we're checking red, but we're going to come out of that check and we're going to play the option.
Okay, we're stemming up a little bit here on this play. Okay, and uh, it's against 10 personnel, and gold is disguised as silver. They're going to run a bubble. Come up and play that bubble play pretty well. Okay. Just looking at the adjustment here against the tray formation, we got a tight end, two wide outs up here, and another one over here. Motion across, we see good adjustment to the motion, and a good stop at the line of scrimmage. This is Steeler. We've got two guys here on the nose. I'm sorry, on the center. And they shift down. Knock him back into the backfield, cause a bubble into the backfield, and get a stop on the run. This is check red against an empty set. Okay, again, we've got an empty set. We're checking red again. Again, they line up and empty on us. We're checking red. Got empty. We've checked red. They run a screen play. We almost make the pick on it. Again, they line up and empty. We're checking red. We're going after the quarterback. Twelve personnel, and what we're looking for, we got two tight ends, two wide receivers out of a shotgun formation. <clears throat> we're looking for a hurry throw and an interception. Been a lot better off he would have knelt down in the end zone. Again, we've got an empty formation. He's under center this time. We're checking red and going after him. They've only got five to block six. Okay. This is sap. We're lining up in a strong gap stack. Okay. We're looking for the linebacker to scrape off on this play. I thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I hope that the information we gave you on scouting is going to make your life a little bit easier and make you a little more efficient in your scouting preparation. And also that you'll be able to coordinate your stunt game with the various coverages in a very intelligent way and also to help you for preparing for this ace bank formation because we're seeing more and more of this formation and Texas, sometimes I think we're getting towards the end of the cycle and we're going to start moving in different directions. But I've talked to a lot of coaches here in California and they seem to think that it's something that's really starting to come in and become very, very popular. I know in the NFL it's, it's starting to die out and we're seeing a lot, lot more of I-formation in the National Football League. Thanks again and good luck this season.